After four years of uh, Modi rule, India's digital economy is a bit disheartened. Two of my uh, recent articles and videos uh, went viral and uh, touched a raw nerve with readers and policymakers. In the first one, uh, I coined a catchy acronym, DECOIT, D-A-C-O-I-T, that's uh, Digital America and China colonizing uh, and obliterating uh, Indian tech. I just used the uh, hard-hitting uh, acronym style patented by uh, Prime Minister Modi himself. A few weeks later, when uh, Walmart acquired Flipkart, it vindicated my decoity assertion. I then published a second uh, uh, piece and video. Uh, Walmart Flipkart, young entrepreneurs pride, government's shame. Here's what a highly uh, acclaimed uh, first generation founder of a digital startup, and yeah, that's not Flipkart, I must uh, hasten to add. Uh, uh, see, see what he told me. Uh, here's the first generation founder. Love the decoity article and video. I've been saying similar stuff but this government is not a good listener. It's really tough. Irony is that they keep saying they want a ghoul and Alibaba to come out of India. I've said this to the face of everyone including the PM politely but they don't get it because the obsession is FDI in the short term. Now for obvious reasons I shall not disclose the identity of this bright young man. Uh, and here is my WhatsApp exchange with a digitally savvy IAS officer. Now this is recorded uh, at about 7 a.m. Uh, one fine morning. IAS officer. Read your very nice piece. Agree with large parts of it, not all. No party can alienate traders with 12 million establishments. Thus, it will also be salami tactics, slow poison, not a direct confrontation. By the way, this PMO has been seized of the issues you mentioned and has been working on it, albeit slowly. You should see positive changes soon. Uh, I said the policymakers should stop micromanaging, trying to control winners and losers. Their job should be to ensure fair competition, not become the arbiters of who can do what under which rules. But unlike you, my friend, other IAS officers are deeply suspicious of freedoms. And politicians, of course, uh, couldn't care less. That uh, is the core problem. I agree with you. Problem in many cases, not all, they are unable to ensure fair competition either. Then leave it to the brutality of markets. That's far better than creating these rent seekers. Give me three months. Unfortunately, uh, Prime Minister Modi is again making the fatal error that has dogged four years of his reign. He is trusting the Indian Administrative Service, IAS, uh, to deliver a modern and a market-friendly uh, policy architecture. Now, before the uh, formidable IAS lobby uh, swats me down, let me say that I am an IAS kid. My father belonged to the 1957 batch Rajasthan cadre. Now, IAS officers are easily the brightest, most intelligent talent that this country has to offer. No quarrel with that. But they're uh, cradle to grave security, ring fences them from volatile success and failure. Uh, their monetary rewards are completely unhinged uh, from merit or achievement. Now, whether you are a fast tracker or a laggard, you move in the same slow lane. This stalemate nurtures a deep suspicion about free markets, hence the urge to uh, micromanage and uh, quote-unquote create provisos. Here's what a uh, Mr. Statistically Suspicious IS officer uh, will stipulate that no single shareholder shall invest more than 10% uh, in the equity capital. Now here's what uh, a structurally suspicious IS officer will say since those large corporations can create layers of uh, ownership behind a corporate whale, uh, we should add quote unquote directly or indirectly in the definition of a single shareholder. Now, here's what uh, uh, a Mr. Small Fetish IAS officer will say. Uh, since startup founders have become dollar billionaires after their exit, we should add a second proviso uh, that these benefits will be available only to the first venture of a first generation entrepreneur. Now, sir, how do you figure that one out? And here's uh, the final nail in the coffin uh, IAS officer. Sir, we must distinguish between startups which add uh, to the tech innovation ecosphere as opposed to somebody just setting up a, a pakora, a, a fried potato shop. So, sir, these concessions should be made available only to those startups which are duly certified by the inter-ministerial board uh, set up under DIPP to identify innovative business operations. There you go again. Even before it's born, this policy has been made 
unimplementable.